everybody! <laughs> Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. Today we are spending some time out in our brand new greenhouse, working in our raised bed garden. I hope you guys liked to see some footage of that before we started here. And uh, we're also going to be working with the tubs that you see lined up against the sides. We finally got all of the compost unloaded from the trailer and into the tubs. We ended up with 26 of these Crystal Licks tubs, which is going to be great for growing in. And then of course our raised bed, which is six feet wide by 22 feet long. So we have a lot of growing space in this greenhouse. We've done some planting in here. We've actually done two rounds of planting, but today is it. We're going to get the entire thing planted so it can just grow and grow. And we're also going to be planting some of these buckets back here. It's a big day. We've got a lot planned and I'm so excited to bring you guys along. But I am even more excited about how much food we are going to be growing in this greenhouse. I want to show you guys the starts, the plant starts that we are bringing out here to plant in the raised bed garden. We have three flats. Most of them did really well. Uh, the broccoli that we planted didn't germinate. Well, one germinated, so better luck this fall, I guess. We've got a lot of cilantro and kale and some tomato plants, chard, bok choy, and uh, some more brassicas. So we're gonna get started planting. Now there are a couple ways that I stay organized when it comes to all of this planting. First of all, I have drawn out this big raised bed garden and I've drawn in all the squares so I know how many squares of each plant I'm going to be planting and what goes where so that when we get out here, we know what we're doing and we're not guessing. But that also has helped me figure out how many starts I need to have in the house, what I need to start. And then I've also tracked on another piece of paper what I have planted in all of the trays. If you don't develop a system that works for you, you're gonna forget what you planted, what date, where everything goes. Uh, so I encourage you to find something that'll work for you. Now I'll show you a little bit closer what I do, and what helps me. So you can see I have our garden here. How many feet? It's a, it's a 22 foot, raised bed garden and I have written in here everything that's going to go everywhere. And then on the other page you can just see that we simply wrote down the trays that we are planting in, which rows have what, and that kind of thing. So you guys develop a system that works for you, but understand that organization takes a lot of the headaches out of this. So now that we have our plan and we have everything in here that we need, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is mark the squares. We're gonna start down the middle of the raised bed garden. We're gonna mark the squares with this seating square. We actually have two of them now, which is exciting. Uh, these seating squares are really handy for marking out the squares that you're gonna plant in. And it has these holes marked out uh, for the number of plants that you plant per square, depending on what it is that you're planting. So Kevin and I are gonna work together to get the center all lined out, and then we can start planting our brassicas, our cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli. Okay, we're gonna get started. Kevin's going to uh, mark all the holes for us first. I'm gonna start uh, planting the cabbage. You can see these gorgeous plants in here. So we're gonna be doing 16 cabbages and then followed by 16 cauliflower. 
They're so cute when they're so little. In this cell, there were two seeds that germinated and they are looking really good and healthy. So I'm gonna split these two apart and plant them separately. Just be very careful. Now, normally we don't split them up. Uh, but because the broccoli didn't germinate, I have extra space to fill. So I'm splitting these up very gently to maximize the amount of produce we're going to grow in here. We do really like cauliflower and we do really like cabbage, so it's still going to work out. The center two rows are completely planted. Lots of cabbage, lots of cauliflower. I'm really excited. Our family eats a lot of cabbage and I'm excited to do more pickling of cauliflower. There is a spicy pickled cauliflower recipe that is our absolute favorite and I want to just pack the pantry with that. Also, if you haven't started fermenting, fermented cauliflower is good too. So I hope to do a lot more of that early this summer, uh, especially with the cauliflower. So next on the agenda is to finish out this side here. There's two, four, six, eight squares that I'm gonna plant seed in. Uh, the first four will be turnips, and then the second four will be different kind, two, to, two more different kinds of lettuce that we don't have planted in the greenhouse at all. So I'm gonna show you again how that seeding square works now that we are planting some seeds. So I'm gonna start with turnip seeds. We love turnips. And turnips, you can plant nine turnips per square foot. And on the seed square, there is nine holes in the yellow. So you just put your planting square down. Now there are two things that you could do here. You can take your dibble and you can poke down in there to mark the holes of where you're gonna put the seeds. And it also includes this little cone or funnel that you could put on each of these holes right there and you can just dump your little seeds in there in each one of these going back and forth. But I don't do that. I want to be able to see in the square a little bit more. So I am just going to use the marks here that I poked down in there just as reference. That's where the seeds are gonna go. I've got my seeds out here. I'm just gonna put two or three seeds in these holes. Sprinkle them in. And cover them up. The last bit of the lettuce to plant will be this Lunix, so gorgeous. <laughs> the turkeys agree. <laughs> Lunix 
Well, today was a great day, but we didn't get nearly the amount of work done in the garden and in the greenhouse that we needed to. Some days just have more interruptions than others, and today was a day full of interruptions. So I'm gonna make sure everything is safe and warm before nighttime comes, but I'm coming back in just a moment to plant the rest of the greenhouse. Hey guys, while we're back at it today, I am bound and determined to get this raised bed planted today and all the buckets. It's gonna be a big job, but I think we can do it. Kevin is going to join me in a couple minutes. He's finishing up some things up in the house. It is a gorgeous, super sunny day. I think I need to go get my hat, uh, but we are gonna get started. Now, I've got at least one fun surprise to share with you guys, something that we've been working on in the house for quite some time that's gonna be included in this greenhouse. So I'm super excited about that. But before we get started planting, I wanna show you something super exciting for me because it means that I am gonna be able to do our first harvest out of this greenhouse in the next day or so. Look at this. So what is so exciting? This lettuce, in both of these buckets are ready for a first harvest. Plus this kale, I can take some off of here. We can have our first homegrown salad of the season. And there's one more thing. This spinach right here is also ready for a first harvest. I cannot wait. Okay, so let's get planting. There, that's better. Now, about two thirds of this whole garden is already planted, whether it be in the transplants or seeds. So we just need to finish this side of the raised bed before we can move on to planting buckets. Can you tell that I'm in a good mood today? I'm planting, the sun is out. I am so excited for spring and so excited to grow food. It's gonna be so awesome to walk into this greenhouse and have the entire raised bed filled with food that we're growing and every one of the buckets lining the side just abundant with food. I hope you are as excited about growing as I am. Okay, let's quick check the chart that I have made here. So we're gonna be planting six squares of kohlrabi, six squares of bok choy, and four squares of cilantro. There, this entire raised bed garden is planted. I'm so happy, so excited. It was great to have Kevin's help. We got it all done. But now, another exciting part of this greenhouse grow out is the buckets. And I know Kevin has been waiting a long time to plant this particular kind of plant in one of these tubs. So I wanna show you what he has up his sleeve. Well, the first tub that I'm going to be planting today shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Tomatoes. The very first tomato plants of 2020. I'm so excited. It's way too early to be planting tomatoes outside, but here in the greenhouse, I think we're ready for them. We're going to give them a try. Now, if it gets super cold, we're definitely going to have to cover them. Uh, but I think, I think it's staying warm enough that we're going to do some pretty good tomatoes here. So I'm planting just, just two plants to start with to see how they're going to do. They're a variety called Gardener's Sweetheart. 
They're supposed to be a heart-shaped uh, cherry tomato, and they're supposed to be just awesome tasting. And actually, one of our subscribers sent us the seeds for these, so thank you so much. I'm excited to get these in, and if these start to do really well, I might just go through and plant tomatoes in every pot. I started these in the house about four or five weeks ago. Now that's a good feeling to get the first tomato plant of the year growing. Well, now that we're planting in the buckets, I want to share with you the surprise that I have for you that we've been working on in the house to be planted out here in the greenhouse, and that is celery. As I've been buying celery at the store, organic celery, I've been saving the bottom of them. You can see here that this is just the bottom of a celery plant like you would have off of what you buy from the grocery store. Um, and I put it in some water in just a little jar like this full of water on the windowsill and it has continued to grow and it has put on a bunch of roots. So I'm gonna be transferring three of these into one of these buckets to just see how it goes through the rest of the spring and maybe into the summer. We'll see how long it takes for them to bolt. And in the meantime, as it gets bigger and bigger, I can harvest some of these off of the bottom and use them in the house. I'm really excited to try this experiment. Now, if you've done this before, good or bad, let me know how it turned out in the comment section below. There, we'll see how that goes. And hopefully we'll have some good celery for in the house. So another thing that I'm super excited to try planting, and I was hoping that I would have actually had time to do this last fall, is something that a friend of mine from down in Arkansas sent me. His name is Hillbilly. Hillbilly, I really appreciate these. Uh, these are multiplying onions. And he actually sent me a bunch of these. I've kept them in the house over winter, and you can see that there's, they've got some nice green on them, so I know that they're still alive. We're gonna do one tub of these. I'm gonna plant them probably a little closer together than they should be, but for now, I just wanna make sure we keep them alive because he actually sent me these, and these have been passed down from generation to generation for over 100 years. Uh, I just think it's pretty awesome. I feel like I'm planting a piece of history here, and I'm excited to have these as part of our homestead, and hopefully we can pass these down from genera generation to generation as well. So we're just gonna get these all going in the bucket here. And these are another plant that when it starts to get too warm in here, we'll be able to move these outside because I think they'll actually do better uh, in the cooler weather than they will in the real warm weather. So I'm gonna plant them just like we do our normal onions and I think that that will be good. And we're just gonna fill this tub up. So you guys, we did it. We got the rest of this greenhouse planted. Now all it needs to do is grow and produce food. I just wanna quickly go over with you what we planted in these buckets. It's a ton. Now I've been showing you all along, we've got lettuce and kale in these three buckets. Then we have Swiss chard, the multiplying onions, peas, artichoke, garlic, carrots, more carrots, more garlic, more carrots, and peas. Now there is one bucket left unplanted here and there are two on the other side that's intentional. We've got one other thing that we're saving to plant in there and we're not quite ready so you'll have to wait on that. Let's check out the other side. Here we have parsley, two buckets of Brussels sprouts, more chard, Kevin's tomatoes, kale, the celery, zucchini, another zucchini, and yellow crooknecks. These two back here are reserved for the future. So you guys, this entire greenhouse, hopefully in not too much time at all, is just gonna be 
bursting with green and food and I cannot tell you how excited I am to show you guys. Now if you're enjoying what you're seeing here make sure that you hit the subscribe button below and the best thing you can do for us here on the homestead is to share our videos. Until next time guys thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.